Good evening, everyone. Uh, Pastor Drew here from Spirit in the Hills Lutheran Church. Uh, welcome to our Good Friday worship service. It is good to be with you this day. Um, we call this day Good Friday, though most of what's around it doesn't seem so good. Uh, the only good comes in the good that God uses, uh, that God brings through the instrument of death, the cross, through the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus, who on the cross maintains open arms to all, offering forgiveness rather than condemnation, neither playing the victim nor creating victims in the process. Jesus, who offers himself for the sake of the whole world and who shows us that life and love are what win in the end, defeating death by death. It's good to be with you this evening. I see several folks tuning in, uh, Dick and Donna and Karen, Allison and Kathy. It is good to have you with us this evening. Um, we are uh, just about ready to get started. Um, you can find a bulletin online. Uh, though That bulletin is our full Good Friday worship service that we usually do each year. Um, there was also an email liturgy, uh, but what we'll be doing tonight pulls a few things from that Good Friday bulletin. Uh, a couple songs and prayers. Uh, I will not be reading the Passion reading, but I will share uh, after we're done two videos with you. One is a reading of Matthew's account of the Passion narrative uh, that was in our email liturgy. And the other is a video of Adoration of the Cross and Were You There When They Crucified My Lord. But we will be doing that liturgical piece uh, during this live stream as well, just a shortened version of it. Uh, we begin by singing, Ah, Holy Jesus. Again, this is in that bulletin that's at spiritinthehills.org slash live. Interceded 
for me, kind Jesus, was thine incarnation, thy mortal sorrow, and thy life's oblation, thy death of pain. And thy bitter passion for my salvation. Therefore, kind Jesus, since I cannot pay thee, I do adore. And will ever pray thee. Think on thy pity and thy love unswerving. Not my deserve. This is a heavy day in the life of the church. And it's a heavy season in the life of the world. And so we might find ourselves in a darkened space for this worship service of darkening, sometimes called tenebrae. God is here too. One of the things that we see most clearly in God incarnate, Jesus Christ on the cross, is that there is nowhere we can be, no pain too deep, no despair or anguish, no feelings of doubt or that God has turned away that God himself has not experienced in Christ. I want to share with you a reflection upon the cross. When we look upon the cross. What we see is an instrument of death created by people, people in power who won through defeat of their enemies and like to put them on public display. You see, the cross is our demand for blood. It's our thirst for blood, it's our instrument of death. It's a, an instrument of our own making that is to end life. And yet we see Jesus upon this cross with a refusal to retaliate. He does not call for vengeance. In fact, he does the opposite. He offers forgiveness. It's our sinfulness. It's our desires for what we want and our disregard for what we need. It's our failure to recognize that we are beloved and that so is everyone on this earth. It is our violence and our separation from God and one another that nail Christ to the cross. And there he's hung with arms open, an offer of forgiveness and no condemnation. 
Even today, we might look upon a death like this and call it a show of weakness and a lack of power. He does not, he, he seemingly cannot save himself. Why would he not if he had the power to do so? We might think hope is for the fools and the strongest ones with the most power and the biggest weapons really do win. Death is the end of the story. Yet even in death, Jesus shows another way of life for he does not save himself, but by the cross saves the world. He shows a way that is not retaliatory, but leads to reconciliation, the bringing together of all things that God has created. Even while receiving violence, he does not perpetuate it, but puts an end to it. There is no place we can go. There is no pain too severe. There is no depression so immobilizing, no pit too deep, no doubt that is not experienced, no suffering that Christ has not suffered and does not suffer with us and for us. And yet in Christ, we have brokenness healed by way of brokenness. We have death destroyed by dying. Faith that includes doubt and questions and uncertainty and love from which there is no hiding and no separation. Because on the cross, we see Jesus with arms open, an offer of forgiveness and no condemnation, but instead only love and life given for the sake of the world, even as we reject it. So on this Good Friday, we consider the death, but we know that faith, hope, and love remain. I'm not sure you can see that, but it's written on the cross. Because there's no place where we see that more clearly, that faith, hope, and, and love remain across death and bring us into new life through Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to invite you to spend some time in prayer with me. Uh, there is, uh, there will be an introduction of a prayer, an invitation to silence, and then a response following up that prayer petition. This series of prayers is included in our email liturgy as well as in our bulletin for Good Friday. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to Share your amens in the chat tonight as we pray together. Also, any prayer requests you might have, share them that we might pray for one another. Let us pray for Elizabeth and Sue, our bishops, for our pastor, for all servants of the church, and for all the people of God.
Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, other ministers, and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church. And help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith and keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our Jewish siblings, for the whole Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and the lives of, of Christians and gladly trust you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and you bring all things to fulfillment in yourself. Do this, we ask, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. for the people of the world struggling with this coronavirus, for all those who are sick or hungry or homeless or have any need, God. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, Give safety to travelers. Keep us safe at home. Free those unjustly deprived of liberty. 
and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask in the words of our Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As I mentioned uh, soon, I'll be posting a video that has an extended adoration of the cross uh, and Uh, an acapella singing of were you there when they crucified my Lord? But I thought we might sing that this evening. It's the end of our worship and let it lead us into reflection and prayer. Then I'll share that more extended version uh, video in a link below. It should be going live on our Facebook page soon. For that uh, one last check in. It's good to to worship with all of you in this way. I love seeing your prayers and your amens in the chat. Um, It is great to know that we are together even while we are apart. And just as there is no place or space or state of being where Christ is not with us, we know that Christ is with us, holding us together because the cross is the collision of all things. The collision of things thought opposite, the binding together of the divine and the human in the person of Jesus and in Christ's body, the church. Let us now behold the cross an instrument of death that God has turned into an instrument of life for the sake of the whole world. So we behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. Oh, come, let us worship him. The end of the song. I'll leave the stream up for just a bit with some time of silent prayer. Uh, before shutting things off. So you will not get another kind of goodbye from me. Uh, but I will see you all Easter Sunday. Uh, we'll be going live at 10 a.m. If you're on our email list, if you're not, hit the blue sign up button at the top of our Facebook page and enter your email address. You'll get an email liturgy from me uh, around 9 uh, or 9 15 in the morning uh, on Easter Sunday, and then uh, and then we'll be live at 10. And we have some wonderful additions to Easter worship, uh, thanks to so many of all of you. So thank you for spending this time in prayer and reflection upon the cross with me. We end singing, Were You There?, uh, which will lead us into a time of silent prayer. Tremble, tremble, 
tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? the tree oh sometimes it causes me to tremble 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 were you when they nailed him to the tree. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they pierced him in the side oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble 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 Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when sun refused to shine. Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in? the tomb